typically as people age, they get changes in their face, both in the quality of their skin and the quantity of their skin. And the treatments are actually different. For quality of skin issues, which are typically fine wrinkles and a little bit of scaliness on the skin, the treatments are really resurfacing, chemical peels, lasers, things like that. But for sagging skin or quantity of skin, if you have loose skin hanging under your neck or people start developing jowls, all the lasers and all the fillers in the world are not going to resuspend it. So those are the candidates for facelift surgery. I think the best time to have it is when you see the signs of change that are occurring, you want to get on it early, and when you have the time to go through a short recovery period and can coordinate it with the rest of your schedule. Rather than do computer imaging, which is something we've talked about from time to time, I prefer to have the patient stand in front of a mirror. And with my hands, I can feel their skin and resuspend the tissue and estimate what the result would be. And I think that's the best way to show the patient uh, what they might expect. During the operation for a facelift, there may be a shorter incision, which is called a short scar lift, or some people call it an S lift, or there may require or be a need for a longer incision that would extend behind the ear. In some patients that come in at a younger age, we can do a short scar lift, which has a minimal incision. It's a fraction of the incision for the traditional op operation. Uh, the patient is then seen back, uh, examined. Typically, they're showering, washing their hair within two days after the surgery. Most people, if their hair is a little bit on the longer side, can let it down. It will cover any sutures that uh, would possibly be needed. And uh, about one week after the surgery, we typically take all of the sutures out. Now, in the meantime, the patient can be walking around. I encourage people to go for walks. I don't want them to have any strenuous physical activity, but walking is fine. Now, there are other things that we can do that are complementary with a facelift, such as liposuction under the chin. We sometimes suction the jowls. And perhaps one of the most revolutionary things that is done with a facelift today is a fat injection. We often will take some of the patient's own fat and clean it, and it can be injected to add a little bit of fill in the cheekbone area or in the middle of the cheek. Part of the aging process is not just the sagging skin, but there's also sort of a deflation of the face. Some of your natural fat sort of gets absorbed and reshifts around. So we can replace that and add some of your own natural fill. We can also resuspend the underlying tissues so that it looks uh, as young as it did once before. Uh, I've personally done studies on identical twins and aging in facelifts and we've looked at the facelift operation comparing different techniques so that we can give you the very best result possible with the shortest minimal recovery.